What has been the biggest coincidence you've experienced in your life so far? In 1983, at the age of 12, I got a concussion horsing around with my brother. We were poor and homeless so it was a couple of days before my mom took me to one of several local hospitals. So, I wound up there for a few more days which were very foggy. Anyway, there was this one nurse who would stop by and be so sweet and brought me cookies and whatnot. I was smitten but never saw her my last day there. Fast forward about 7 years and I am delivering auto parts for a local Napa. I get to be good buddies with the parts coordinator at a very large construction company and he keeps going on and on about his best friend's wife. She is so wonderful, sweet and all, and he wishes his wife were cool like this guy's wife. I mean, I listened to this dude gush about her nearly every day for 6 months. About 2 years later I met and soon after married my wife, who incidentally, is 14 years older than me. Through talking, which is the great denominator of our relationship, I come to realize that my wife is not only the nurse 12 Wyomi was amored with, but also the, then wife of the guy's best friend. In just one more unsubstantiated instance, I swear I saw her standing near the lakefront during the fireworks on the 4th of July in 1976. She has confirmed that she was there that day but had been drinking didn't remember which part of the lake she was standing on. There were thousands of people there that day. We have been married for 26 years. Now, I am still very much in love with her and I truly believe she is my soulmate. Dude, everyone believes she's your soulmate now. The only time in my life I've ever seen the Oscar Mayer we Nermabal was when I was telling someone about it. They refused to believe it existed, and I was describing it to them, and then it drove by. I think I must have summoned it. I've been trying again, arranging various frankfurters in a pentagram surrounded by mustard scented candles, but haven't had any luck. Went on a vacation to London. While there I met a man from Scotland. He found out I was from California and was like, Oh, I used to work with a guy in California. Maybe you know him internally I was rolling my eyes but I didn't want to be the ugly American so I humored him and asked for more information. The dude in California that the Scot had worked with turned out to be my father. When I was in high school my best friend had just moved to town with her family, including her older sister who had a baby when she was 17. I spent a lot of time at her place and babysat the baby occasionally. She moved away a couple years later and we eventually fell out of touch. Cut to 2015. I meet a guy online. We hit it off and became FWBs and hang out quite a bit. In 2017 he gets a Facebook message from a young man claiming to be his son. The time frames and people involved all add up and yes, it is indeed his son. He is telling me the story, mentions the mother's name and holy frick. It's the same name of my best friend's older sister. Turns out I was babysitting his kid he didn't know he had back in 1995. I had pictures of me with the baby and everything. I lived in an apartment in San Francisco for several years. I moved out. A couple of years later, I met a girl and we started dating. She lived in the exact same unit that I had lived in. I moved back into that unit. We have been married for 25 years. Played an MMO, EverQuest, for years. After about 5 years in I got to talking to someone else who was in my guild that entire time. It turned out we lived in the same city, then the same neighborhood. We talk a bit more and come to realize we were next door neighbors and had been that entire time. Drove 300 miles to a beach and go into the bathroom as soon as we get there to take a pee. Only open urinal is next to my grandfather who lives right next door to me. Neither of us knew we were going there. I rolled a jump scared him to make him pee everywhere as a joke lol. I met a guy on a forum who had the same name as me, lived in the same town as me, and engaged in the same hobby as me. I told him we should meet to make sure we're not the same person. Ended up marrying the daughter of my high school wrestling coach about 12 years after I graduated. Had I known that my high school wrestling coach, when visiting his grandkids, would be walking around my living room in his underwear, I probably would have been less of a teenage donghead around him. Stumbled into a bar 4000 miles from home, in another continent, and literally bumped into one of my closest childhood friends whom I haven't seen since I was 12. A totally unplanned. I live in Mazara, but was in London about 15 years ago because our college marching band was marching in their New Year's Day parade. 
I was marching on the left flank, dutifully playing my instrument, and decided to stop looking straight ahead like you're supposed to because I figured I'd never get a chance to enjoy this particular scenery again, if I hadn't been on the left hand side and glanced to my left in that exact moment, I never would have seen my cousin, also from Missouri and who I hadn't seen since I was a little kid, standing within an arm's reach with a shocked and confused look on her face. A lot of things had to coincidentally align for me to stroll past her on that particular street on the other side of the planet. I was shopping with my mom and my grandpa and I saw a cool lego truck for 20 euros that I totally wanted. I asked my mom if I can have it. She says only if I buy it myself. Fully knowing that I didn't have money on me because I was 11 or so and of course normally my mom pays for everything and not some little kid. So instead my grandpa gave me 1 euro to buy a lottery ticket, or rather he bought it because gambling laws and so and I just picked it. Ah and I won exactly 20 euros, highest winning any one of our family ever won in a lottery to this day. Nobody really plays much, you can bet that I bought that lego truck. That's how you turn a kid into a gambler. I worked in a video store. I was picking up the returns to put them back in the system when I found a business card in the returns bin. It's the only time in 3 years that I ever found anything other than movies. We were 3 employees on that shift, so any of us could have found it. It was one of my brother's business card. He lives in another city and had no idea where I worked and when. I asked him about it and he has no idea how it got there. What are the chances that someone dropped it in my store, on my shift and I would be the one to pick it up? It could have been someone who knew both of us playing a trick on me, but I moved in that city just 2 years prior and none of the people I knew there could possibly know my brother as well. I have another one. While signing the lease of our new apartment, the landlord realized that my so's name was familiar. It was a pretty big apartment building and they had a lost and found box. The landlord went and searched in the box and got my so's handbag that had her name written inside. She lost that handbag a year earlier during her vacation in British Columbia, 2300 miles from here. We have no idea how it got there. I think the handbag might have been stolen and then sold to another tourist that ultimately took it back to your city. It's crazy how all that stuff aligned. Once I got a call from a school friend's number. I was 15 then and wasn't particularly close to this person, and her little cousin spoke to me, as though we were close friends, using my name etc. I was surprised but played along because she was little. Then when I spoke to this friend later, she said sorry and that she must have called by mistake. I got the call again the next day and played along again, and this time when I bumped into the friend, she sounded a little worried and said that she had to say something. She started crying. She said that the little girl was her cousin who used to live in the US and there. She had a friend with the same name as mine and similar age as mine. And that they both were the closest of friends. And once she moved back to India, they discovered that she had a terminal illness for which she is being treated currently. Meanwhile, that guy with the same name died and they kept it from the little girl because it wouldn't have gone down well with her. And that she thought my number was actually his and spoke to me like it was him. I spoke to her two more times that week, thus time very willingly and for a longer time. The last time I spoke to her, she was going for her surgery and I said that it'll all be fine. The next day, my friend breaks the news, she was hardly holding it together, but she was nice enough to bring me a few photos of her cousin. I was really glad I had the chance to keep her happy in her last few days. My chest. Went on a river float trip to the Frio River right after graduating high school. Sometime during the trip I lost my class ring. Next year, a guy that worked with my dad found it in the river, recognized the last name, and brought it back with him. I have since lost it again evacuating from a hurricane. Damn it. A few weeks ago, I mentioned and it if wasn't for some random stranger on the internet, I wouldn't have been able to do that seamless cloud texture and fell out. I was in a pub at the time. A guy behind me tapped me on the shoulder. You just been talking about Fallout 3, mate? I was a bit confused, but said yeah, a mod I made for it a few years ago. The guy laughed. I did that cloud texture for you. Hatix, right? Yeah, bloody heck. On my first solo trip to Europe during college, I attended a concert at the Cathedral of Notre Dame, Paris. 
there I was in this packed cathedral, feeling a bit alone because of traveling by myself. When I looked to the right, I was amazed to see the person sitting next to me was my high school crush. She, too, was alone. From that point on, we shared everything together for the remainder of our stay. That's adorable. My full name is very unique. I've only been able to find one other person on Facebook with my particular name. And although it sounds exactly the same the surname is a different spelling. Before I went to university a few years ago, I had to go to a couple of meetings regarding the course and some equipment I needed at a local business building. I was entitled to a grant that would cover a laptop and some relevant software. So I arrive and go to sign in, then I pause. I thought I'd had some sort of fugue or that somebody was playing a trick on me. My name was in the sign in book. Apparently I'd signed in an hour previously and had left about 10 minutes ago. It was spelled exactly like mine. The first time I'd ever seen that in 30 years, and the handwriting even looked like mine. I unfroze myself and signed my name underneath with a furrowed bro. Then I worried quietly that I was having some sort of mental break until I walked into my meeting. The guy I was scheduled to see was brimming with excitement that my name was exactly the same as the woman who'd come in before me. He was shocked because it was clearly such a different name and the whole thing was an astronomical coincidence. We discussed the odds on it happening and how strange life can be sometimes. During this conversation he filled me in on a few details. Turns out we were on the same course. Same meeting. Same building. Same specific grant being available to us. Perfect time of day for me to see her name in the book too. Had it been a few spaces higher I would have completely missed it. She was even my age. I spent the next year seeing her name pop up numerous times in sign and books related to our course and having people commenting on it in baffled surprise. I never met her because she was attending the course though a different provider and our schedules never matched. It also never became normal. Whenever I saw her name I'd get a little jolt of recognition and then would have to force my brain that had been trained to think it was truly individual to conclude that yes, it was my name, but it wasn't me. Then I'd carry on with my day feeling decidedly fluttery. Weird year. My dad passed away when I was 2 years old. 20 plus years later, I was making a delivery of paint to a small little plant. These deliveries were just routine boring things. I would go in, drop them off, and have management there or someone high up sign off on the delivery. I do my delivery, an older man comes up, signs for it, and I head back to my truck. No small talk besides a low and sign there, thanks. Get in my truck, and head back to the shop. I get in and go to process my paperwork when I notice the man who signed for it has the same name as my dad, including my last name. He even wrote the first letter of his last name like I do. I haven't told anyone about it because I don't want to believe that my dad didn't die, but ran off. There's a headstone and proof of death. But this older man would have been the same age as my dad. The fact that it was the same first name and last name, along with how it was signed, always kept me thinking. When I was a little kid my folks used to make me and my younger sister visit our great grandmother in the nursing home. She was blind and like 98 years old. She was sort of scary as a kid, as her eyes were all frosted over, and she had papery skin and would touch our faces to see how big we'd gotten. She had a tiny sing sanji voice, but what freaked me out more was her roommate who didn't talk at all except for reaching at me and saying my name. My folks never spoke to her other than to say hello and goodbye, or like Merry Christmas or whatever. Anyway, 20 years later I asked my dad what the frick that lady's deal was. He casually mentions it was my other great grandmother, who was senile and bedridden. His family had a big falling out when he was a kid, so they never really knew each other. I look just like my dad, and share his name. So she thought I was him, is the theory. They were roommates purely by coincidence. It was a pretty big nursing home in a pretty big city. To be honest I am more flawed by my dad's complete indifference to the situation than I am by the coincidence. That actually is a really crappy thing to do. He should have told you way I, I sooner. A good friend died suddenly and tragically from pancreatic cancer. I was helping him fix his car after a hailstorm, and he was encouraging me to do something fun on my day off. Get out of town became our saying. Got to get out of town. Shortly after he died, a bunch of us went to a concert of his favorite band as a tribute to him. On our way there, we passed a brand new billboard, 
All it said was get out of town. It was probably for an airline or something, but it seemed too perfect. Too much of a coincidence. It's something I won't forget. I've had someone who knows me personally send this account a PM. Only they didn't know it was me. My brother sent a meme to our family. I made that meme. Oh crap what up. Growing up I had two imaginary friends. George and Lucy. They happen to be alligators but that doesn't make any difference to this story. Fast forward about 20 years and my sister introduces me to her fiance and his sister, who has the same name as me, and two children, George and Lucy, but sadly they're not alligators. It's like Jumanji. On day I was trying to find how to get in touch with a guy who I wanted to network with for a job and couldn't find out what company he had moved to. That afternoon I was shopping for couches on Craigslist and replied to an ad. It was that dude's couch. He invited me to his company for a meet and greet and I ended up getting a job there. Weirdest coincidence of my life. My family friends own a ranch in Texas. Growing up, I always visited on holidays. One trip, their grandfather gave me my first pocket knife. As I had just joined the Boy Scouts, I was out in the woods fricking around with my new knife when I heard a bunch of coyotes screaming nearby. If you haven't heard them scream before, it's pretty haunting. So, as I'm running back to the house I trip and face plant. When I get back to the house, I realize I had lost the knife in my tumble. I felt absolutely terrible, and with it being full, and the handle of the knife made of wood, I pretty much lost all hope of finding it. I told their grandfather the next day. He proceeds to grab two rakes and we head off into the woods. I found a random spot and demonstrated my face plant. When I looked down, the knife was right there. He recently passed this year. That man meant a lot to me, as does that knife, which I still have to this day. Just today I called my mum on the phone to ask if I could come over and she asked if I'll be there for dinner. When she said this I could smell spaghetti bolognese. When I got to her house guess what was for dinner? Spaghetti bolognese. There was nothing around that could have possibly made me smell any sort of pasta dish and she didn't say what we were having for dinner. That's because of your smell phone. I didn't want to be friends with a kid, age 7, because their mom looked mean. Age 15 same kids moved away after we dated, for like a month, have a note saying I wasn't going to wait around for anyone I probably wouldn't ever see again. Age 20 they are my blind date. We have 3 kids. You have been visited by the ingenious Joe. Comment brain so you always see the glass half full. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.